All right, we're still here talking about compound interest. Um, in all of the problems that you've done so far, uh, you were always given um, an interest rate, a starting amount, an amount of time, a compounding period, and you were trying to find the new balance. Let's suppose, as a slightly different type of problem, let's suppose that you know what the final balance is that you want to have. You're trying to do some planning here. And the idea is, I want to, I, I need this much money at a certain point in time. So let's suppose that you have some agreement and you and your husband have decided that you are going to save up and you want to have $20,000 to give to your son or daughter when they graduate from high school that they can use towards college. So that's, that's your fairness agreement. That's what you want to do. Now your son is currently um, eight years old and so let's say that in 10 years you would like to have $20,000 in your savings account. Now your savings account happens to pay 3% interest compounded monthly. And so my question is, how much do I have to invest now so that 10 years from now I'm going to have that $20,000 um, built up? from this amount of interest. So um, we're going to use the power of t power of time to help our monetary investment. Um, because we're dealing with a compound interest problem, we still use the same formula. And the formula is this, P of N equals P of 0 times 1 plus R divided by K to the capital N, K. All right, so let's identify what we know. In this case, we know that my value for n, which is the number of years, is 10. I know that k, which is my compounding period, is 12 because I'm compounding monthly. So 12 times per year, I'm having this repeated compounding value. Um, the account is set at 3% annual or 3% interest, and um, change that again to decimal form, so 0.03. This time. Um, in terms of starting amount, well, that's what I'm trying to find out. I don't know what it is. But I do know that 10 years later, the balance of my account should be $20,000 if all's going to go according to plan. So let's plug these values into my equation. So now I have $20,000 is equal to P naught, which I still don't know, times 1 plus R divided by K to the, oh, I was subbing numbers in there, wasn't I? Uh, my R value is 0 0.03. And my k value was 12, because I'm compounding monthly. We'll fix that. And this is all going to be to the n, which is 10 years later, times my compounding period, which was 12. So this is my new equation. Now, notice that this is p naught. This is what I want to solve for, and this is what I want to get a loan. Now, in, right here, all of this is being multiplied by p naught right now. There are no variables, there are no unknowns, so I can do all of this math right here. Again, use the power of your graphing calculator, type it in exactly the way you see it. So it's in parentheses, it's 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 12. Close your parentheses, take it to the power, so that's that little caret button, and then in parentheses, because you need the whole of 10 times 12 to be in the exponent, and then close the parentheses. Again, if you have an older style calculator, you'll actually see the little caret thing here, and then that'll just all be on the main level. Um, but in this case, when I do all of this, I get 1.34935357. Um, and so that is just everything over here. So I have 20,000 equals P naught times that whole big mess. Now, keep in mind, we're dealing with exponents and all sorts of crazy stuff. Try to include at least four digits after the decimal, or sometimes your answers are going to be a little bit off of what you see in the back of the book. Um, if you're fairly comfortable with your calculator, you can include all of the digits for accuracy, and that's totally awesome. Um, or you can use the fact that your calculator remembers the last thing that you entered. Um, so in this case, I want to get the P not by itself, so I've got to divide by that 1.34 crazy number. Okay. 
when I do that, that's going to get the P not alone, and on the other side, I'm going to get the answer that I'm looking for, how much money I have to invest in order to end up with that $20,000 after 10 years. So I'm going to do 20,000, 20, 1, 2, 3, and then I want to divide it by 1.349, and you can retype all of that in. Or the other thing that you can do, since this is the last answer that the calculator got, there's a special way you can do that. If you hit the second button, and then hit the negative button. See how it says ANS right above that button? It, what that says is that ANS means use the last answer that I got. The advantage of doing that is it remembers all of these old decimal points um, as you're figuring out your value. So all I do, $20,000 divided by the last answer, hit enter, and I get that all I need to invest now is $14,000 or $14,821.91 now, and 10 years from now, that will have grown to $20,000. So that sounds like a great idea. You've got 10 years of time. It, all, that, all you had to do was come up with this $14,000 up front and then just let it sit there. And 10 years later, you'll have exactly the amount of money you need, and we've earned over $5,000 in interest. Um, and in fact, that is... Um, One of those questions that your homework's going to ask you sometimes is how much money would you have earned in interest? And it's just the difference between what you started with and what you ended up with in terms of the balance of your account. Um, okay, so that's solving for P-naught. And it's one of those other things that you want to do. And this is a great thing uh, in terms of figuring out values. Uh, of course, most of us can't come up with this big, huge $14,821 14, up front to just sit there. And so instead, what we'd like to be able to do is do payment plans, pay a small amount at a regular interval for a long period of time, and try to have that interest adding up as we go along. And that's called an annuity, and it's the next thing that we're going to learn about. So anyway, try the homework problem um, in the book real quick. I think it's problem nine. And um, then come back and we will see how these annuity things work.